Face coverings are now mandatory in shops and on public transport in England. Of course, we know that in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, that has been the case for a long time. Retailers and transport bosses have said they can't expect their staff to police mask wearing because of the fear of being abused by customers. We're joined now by the managing director of Iceland Supermarkets, Richard Walker. We can also speak to the Unite Union's National Officer for Passenger Transport, Bobby Morton, and Professor Trish Greenhouse, who is an expert in primary health care and knows everything there is to know about masks and their effectiveness. Just in case anyone, Professor Greenhouse, has any doubts still about bringing back mask policy, how effective are masks in stopping the spread of COVID? Uh, well, it depends on the mask and it depends whether you're wearing it consistently. But masks are an extremely uh, good and important measure. We need to have what we call vaccines plus. Everybody needs to have their vaccines, have their boosters, as you were encouraging them to do earlier, and also wear a well-fitting, high-quality mask whenever they're indoors, whenever they're in crowds, uh, and whenever they're having close contact with other people. OK, so Richard Walker, if somebody today walks into an Iceland and is not wearing a mask, what does your store manager say to them? Well, when they walk in, there'll be window posters um, asking them to put a mask on. Um, the store manager may even politely ask them to as well when they come into the store if they're not wearing one. So, of course, you know, we support, I support the reintroduction of, of compulsory face masks. Um, but I won't be asking my store colleagues to uh, police those who refuse to adhere to these rules because I know that you know, bizarrely, this is a, a divisive issue. Um, and I think, you know, my store colleagues have got enough to deal with in the run up to Christmas, quite frankly. So if, um, that, so... So if that person says, I'm not wearing a mask for whatever reason, other than perhaps a legitimate exemption, they have some kind of respiratory reason they can't wear one, um, then what would your member of staff do? Would that be it? They'd leave it? Yeah, that'd be it. Um, Unite actually have lifted the lid on, on the abuse that, that retail staff face. So over 90% of retail staff have been assaulted, threatened or abused over the last 12 months. It's a serious issue. Um, and, and therefore, I'm not putting my, my store colleagues at, at risk because, quite frankly, they've been her heroic throughout yeah. this whole pandemic, keeping the wheels turning. Uh, Bobby, let's come to you because you're the Unite Union's National Officer for Passenger Transport. So you look after bus drivers. So you know personally just the loss that bus drivers have faced. I still can't quite believe but 51 London bus drivers were lost in that first year of the pandemic. You know how crucial this is. How are the bus drivers and the people in your union feeling about public transport and the compulsory wearing of face masks? I know that in London, a condition of carriage has been, they've supposed to have been worn for the last, I don't know, year. And yet that doesn't seem to be the case. How are they feeling about the enforcing of that now and the importance for your members that people getting on those buses and on the trains are actually wearing them? The, the, the problem then is that people uh, do not take notice of the mandatory elements and and we we we've been campaign, campaigning at unite now for two years that on on public transport masks should be worn um not not just campaigning for the mandatory wearing of them uh but 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 campaigning for the enforcement there is no enforcement um and i i have a great fear for for my drivers because uh, I'm spooked by a case in Paris just this, this year where a driver left his cab and asked people to put face masks on and, and he was beaten to death by four passengers. So God forbid anything like that ever happens in the UK. Have, have the, that's My extraordinary. Goodness. We didn't know that, uh, Bobby. Has there been circumstances where your drivers have been attacked or confronted for trying to get people to wear masks? Yes, we... We, we again at Unite, um, we, we insist to, to our members, our drivers, do not leave the cab under any circumstance. We, we've made the cab so safe uh, against the virus itself. If you move away from the cab, you, you, you may get the virus, but then again, uh, you may con con come into contact with passengers who may be unhappy because they've got to put the mask on. And we have had drivers who have been attacked, abused, spat at, um, it, it's it's a dreadful experience for the drivers and 
I, I, I keep, I'll say it forever more, there's got to be enforcement and the enforcement has got to be seen. So, Bobby, what are you suggesting? If you're saying that the driver should stay in their cab and they're at risk of abuse or worse if they emerge from their cab, what should that enforcement look like? Well, I, I don't care, Susanna, what it looks like. If, if it's a policeman or a policewoman or if it's someone from the bus operators, it doesn't matter to me as long as there is someone to police and, and monitor the situation, not, not just on buses, but in retail, in hospitality as well. Um, that's the government's problem, but it's one that they fail to address every time we mention it to them. Professor Greenhouse, how, um, what's the difference between these different environments? I can imagine if you're on a bus and you sit next to someone who's not wearing a mask and you feel at risk, you probably are at significant risk. But I know you want masks in, in much broader situations, don't you? For instance, <laughs> at football matches, you'd like people to wear a mask. Is that, well, it's not the same level of risk, though, is it, if you're outdoors? No, it's not. It's about a 20th the level of risk if you're outdoors compared to indoors. But let's go back to that bus and the person sitting next to you not wearing a mask. The important thing to think about is the volume of air in that bus and whether or not it's being ventilated out of the windows. Now, if you've got the windows closed, as we often do in, in cold cl climates, uh, the volume in a bus is tiny compared to the volume in uh, something like an open plan office or something like that. So it's not just the person who's sitting next to you because these viral particles sit in the air uh, even after people have got off the bus and then you are breathing them continuously so it's not a single ballistic strike it is that continuous inhalation of viral laden air that we need to avoid now the way we avoid that is that we wear a mask to catch the virus as we're breathing it out if we're infected, but we also wear a mask to protect ourselves against the virus that's already in the air. And the third reason we wear a mask is to provide a signal to everybody else that we care about them and we're taking the pandemic seriously. And I do think this idea of the aggressive person shouting in the shop, uh, yes, that is a real problem. I have a brother who works in the supermarket. He's been abused. Uh, but let's remember that 83% of people are very, very keen to have masks reintroduced, and most people are going to comply. Richard, we were just hearing from Bobby Morton, uh, who says that there should be people, not the drivers, but people on the buses who enforce uh, this measure. Uh, and that's public transport. In private supermarkets, have you considered employing security guards to enforce the, to enforce the mask mandate? Uh, yes, and, and we do um, in the worst stores, in terms of the stores where our staff would be most at risk. We spend uh, millions on security every year, but I think um, what we have to appreciate is that the, the scale is such that we literally cannot police uh, self-police every store every hour of every day. It would cost um, millions uh, every week and, and, quite frankly, put us out of business. Um, so I think... Sorry, Richard, I just so on, on that exactly that point, Sarah says, I, uh, as a security guard for Little, my partner suffered amazing abuse when he requested that a customer put a mask on before they entered the store. So Sarah's partner is actually a security guard. He doesn't bother now, because regardless of whether you're getting security to come in and look authoritative, if someone's going to confront them and start abusing them, you won't want them to engage in a way that's going to do some damage to your security staff, surely? No, I think that's right. And, you know, if... if, if it, the question isn't whether we should mandate fast, face masks, it's, it's whether we can. And I think, you know, that the government must help uh, businesses like ours wherever possible to, to enforce the policing of, of wearing of masks. Um, it's, it's really that simple. Yeah. Um, and we ultimately need to build back confidence, you know, in terms of people coming back to the high street, feeling confident shopping in stores. And if they can't, shopping online where we've got yeah. um, plenty of slots. Um, and just, sorry, just before we let you go, Jack's got in touch. Jack is a salon owner and says that uh, he enforces face masks. Now, of course, if you're going into a salon, you could make it a condition of your appointment that you wear a mask or not. And if someone refuses, you just cancel their appointment. So it's probably a slightly easier transaction mm. than in a supermarket. Because do you consider saying to people, if you're not going to wear a mask, you're not coming in? Is that unenforceable? 
Again, I think it's un unenforceable because it, it can be a, such a divisive issue for many. Uh, we're certainly not in the business of uh, having to pre-book appointments. I'd never want that. Uh, Five million customers a week, it wouldn't be uh, possible. Um, but we can politely ask. We can uh, ask at the front door before they come in. Uh, we can even ask them in store. But that's as far as I want my colleagues to go because they're they're dealing with enough and, and they've been so good throughout this pandemic. All right. Thank you, all of you, very much indeed. And, and good luck.